So the goals of, uh, of, of starting this MPS exercise is um, to, to have a definition of why you're creating that five data set. Uh, so what is the goal of, of doing this work with the team of modelers, estimators, and schedulers? And also, what is needed per stage? Uh, so you don't get from point A to point B at once. You will have intermediate deliverables. You want to define upfront what is required for each of those intermediate points so that the other team members can work against it. Another goal is to define the information richness that is needed for the defined purpose. Uh, so if, it, if this is going to be a business development kind of uh, 5D model, it will require much less or much smaller level of detail than what you would need if you're going to build a, uh, uh, a production planning, production estimating uh, kind of 5D set. Third goal is to establish a set of, um, of definitions for how the team is, is going to work. So you want to describe methodology uh, for how the design is documented, uh, how the cost plan uses that information, so how the, the cost planner will use the design information, and then after that, how the scheduler uh, will use the cost plan and design information uh, to create the location-based schedule. Fourth point, very important for teamwork as well, is we want to be able to identify the actions that are needed to go from one stage to the next. So we know what the intermediate stages are. We know what purpose uh, we define for each of those intermediate stages. Um, but and, and with the information richness that we define for each of those stages, we know what needs to be included. Uh, the actions will help us identify the work that needs to be completed by each of the team members in order to achieve the goals that we have defined for that intermediate stage. Just to be clear, um, everybody has heard about MPS by now. The MPS is a specification that defines how model and design cost plan and the, uh, the, the schedule will evolve from the early phases of, uh, of the project, from the early design phases, all the way to the construction phase or how it will evolve in, in segments of that. Uh, during that time frame, from start to finish, the information richness, so the level of detail, will increase, and that is what we call the model progression. So I mentioned already the level of detail a couple of times. Level of detail, or LOD, is a, a number, a metric, that uh, tells us how much information is included in a model or a model element at any point in time. Um, normally, the level of detail uh, of an element and as the project as a whole um, increases over time throughout the project design phases. Uh, so you start with an assumption and you refine that over time until you end up with the construction documentation set. The level of detail number covers not just the, the model and, the, level and the, uh, the, the granularity of the, the design, uh, but also covers cost and schedule aspects. We'll um, explain that a little bit more with, uh, with some examples. This is a, uh, a cost plan and a model for level of detail 100. And so level of detail 100 is a number that we use for concept planning. And concept planning means I know what the footprint of the building is going to be. I know the number of floors, so therefore I can represent the building as really a stack of boxes, giving me the total square footage of the building. Now that number can be used to, uh, to as, a, as an input uh, for a cost estimate that uses average cost per square foot of like projects and results in an LOD 100 cost plan with a uh, corresponding number. If you increase the level of detail up to going to level of detail 200, which is a number that we use for the for a schematic type of, uh, of project design state, uh, we can start to use uh, building elements. Building elements that do not have 
exact sizes, uh, have approximate locations, uh, but can be used uh, for average cost calculation on an element level. So in this case, we added the foundation elements at LOD 200. Uh, we have continuous footing, spread footing, and slide on grid, and we uh, use a average cost for those elements uh, to calculate uh, the cost for those uh, as part of the foundations and substructure. As soon as we have completed adding all the LOD 200 elements for foundations and substructure, we activate the foundations and substructure assembly, which, take, which completes the A10 foundations and substructure piece of the cost plan to become a level of detail 200 part of the cost plan. We can then further increase the level of detail for those foundation elements and go to a level of detail 300, which means uh, we do know the exact sizes and the exact placement of the elements. We also know what the construction methodology is going to be for those elements. So we know that it's going to be cast in place. We know <coughs> that we need um, reinforcement uh, that needs to be placed on site. And so that means that we can add cost items for those uh, activities to the elements that we defined in level of detail 200. So we enrich the continuous footings in this case with more detailed information. And again, as soon as we're ready doing that, we have completed an action and that completes continuous footings at level of detail 300, which updates the total project cost. We can then even take that further and go into the into LOD 400, which is construction documentation level of detail, really the highest pre-construction level of detail. And if you choose to go into that level of detail, you may be able to uh, add more detailed material takeoff or uh, more detailed labor uh, information that you uh, plug into your estimate at that point. Level of detail 500 would be a virtual mock-up or sometimes <coughs> as built. And again, that that, uh, that increases uh, the number of line items and the number of elements that you have in your in your 3D model. Increases also the accuracy, but also increases the amount of work in case of uh, a change design. At any point in time, <clears throat> what you want to do with, uh, with those type of scenarios is you want to define stages and define targets for each of the uh, groups of information in your model, cost plan, and estimate. So that is the, the, the target level of detail for a stage. So we can say site preparation needs to be at level of detail 100 in stage 1. Interior build-out needs to be at level of detail 150. I need my space planning in order to make decisions regarding interior build-out. If you do that for the entire project, after you have decided how many stages you want for the project, you can start defining the, uh, the progression uh, for each of the building element categories as we have them here to the left. Let me go one back. So for each of the building element categories, site preparation, substructure, you define what the targeted level of detail is per stage. <clears throat> and again, the targeted level of detail depends on what you want to achieve in that stage. <clears throat> in stage three, uh, you may want to make a decision about the interior finishes, and therefore you need more detailed information. Uh, maybe in stage, uh, stage four, uh, you want to start scheduling uh, your substructure, and therefore you need to be in level of detail 300. And so that means your exact locations and exact dimensions of the foundation elements need to be known. All of this has been published uh, by the uh, uh, AIA as um, the uh, as part of the uh, IPD guide. Uh, so that the, they have published a a set of standardized uh, building element categories based on unit format, uh, cost breakdown structure, and coding. And they have defined a set of standard uses of the LOD numbers that, uh, that I introduced a minute ago. <clears throat>